Okay, next tool up is our flaring tool. I want to show you next how that works. Flares are getting to be more and more uh, popular, especially with uh, mini split systems. Uh, pretty much that's how they get put together is, is just using uh, flares and uh, flare fittings. So let me walk you through on that one. Uh, let me show you an example of a couple flares. Um, here's one that we're gonna, we're gonna replace. Uh, this is a, um, a piston metering device assembly. And you can see we've got a, we need to somehow get this pipe connected to this so that we can flare it down and make a nice solid leak-free connection. Uh, let me show you the pipe that was in here. Here's what uh, the two pieces of flare look like. This is the uh, brass flare. It's a, it's a pretty much an exact 45 degree angle. And using the flaring tool, we're able to make a another perfect 45 degree angle in the copper tubing. And when those two come together, they match up real nice and tight and fit face to face, just like that. Then if I take my flare nut, tighten it down, get two wrenches, um, and tighten this about another half turn, I'm gonna have a leak-free uh, fitting between the two. So now I've adapted my copper pipe right into my uh, metering device. So this is typically what you're gonna find in a um, uh, air handler for small condominiums and apartments. And my 3 8 refrigerant line is gonna come in. You'll have to cut it, flare it, attach it. Uh, make sure it does not leak when you uh, uh, leak check your system, put it in a vacuum, charge the unit, etc. cetera. Um, so that's why these flares are so important to get right. So let me get rid of that one. So here's the pipe I'm going to use, and this is the one we put the little swedge fitting on, so I'm going to cut it off. There's all kinds of different size cutters depending on the application. If you don't have a lot of room, you're working up uh, maybe on a condensing unit on the side of a home and the piping is right up against the wall, the smaller tubing cutter the better. If you have room, I recommend you get a bigger tubing cutter. It's just a little easier to operate. Cuts a little faster. I'm able to open this up. I've got two rollers on one side that the piping uh, is held together with, and then I've got a cutting blade that does all my cutting. Uh, some of these come with spare blades. I think possibly if I took this screw out, there was a, that is a spare blade right there that you can put in, and you're uh, good to go. It doubles the life of your uh, cutting tool. So loosen it up to the point. You can get that cutting wheel nice and tight on there. Just snug, not real tight. And then you just start turning. Couple turns, tighten, couple turns, tighten, couple turns. Time consuming. They now have uh, tubing cutters that hook up to the batteries on your uh, drill packs. Makes life easier, although that's not too crazy long. Now you can see the downside of cutting pipe is that it slightly indents the copper in and that's going to be tough for uh, to, to be able to swedge or flare or do anything. So again I've got to use my deburring tool and putting this upside down I'm able to clean up that excess copper We do inside and out. Outside is just as important when I'm talking about a flare. See, I get some extra bits of copper in there that are going to find their way to my expansion valve. So I want to clean those out and make sure that looks good. So now I've got a nice clean end to my piping here. I might even uh, sand this. Uh, I like to do that too, just to sand and make sure I've got all the little uh, little burrs and scratch marks out of there. These are all potential leaks. So sand it up, making a nice clean, clean piece of copper. Next, I've got to figure out which size piping I'm working with. This is 3 8 so I'm going to use this smaller assembly here. I'm going to look at the 3 8 on on this, and I know that's where my piping goes. 
This one can swivel all the way out. This one you just need to loosen up. Bring my piping in. Get things kind of snug initially. Just barely snug. Now the design of this is, if you can remember this, uh, you want this copper sticking up above the surface of your flaring tool about the width of a nickel. So if you want to know where to put that, that's it. I should be able to stack a nickel on here and have the top of the nickel level with the copper pipe. So once you got that set, then it's a matter of tightening it down, both sides, a little more than snug. Don't need a tool, but you just need to make it snug as possible. Next, I have my, my flaring tool itself. And I've got uh, a multitude of heads that are available in this. This is actually a uh, swedging and flaring kit. So I can swedge copper tubing, use the same equipment to do that, depending on the size piping I have. I think the swedging tool is a lot easier to use, so I typically opt for that. Head goes on, I tighten it on with the little captive bolt that's on there. And I need to back this out. And I'm gonna line these two together. You can see the notches on here will notch onto my flaring tool so that it can pull. You can see you can just slide it right up, get it right above my copper and start uh, cranking it down. And when it's snug, it's just a matter of making a couple turns. Using my Kung Fu grip, nice and tight. Then back off your tool. Open up your wing nuts. Oops. And there's your flare. And you can see this should now match up with that. Looks pretty close. There we go. Okay. All right. So I cut my tubing because I'm a knucklehead and I forgot to put my flaring nut on. Once that's on, you can see again that the, the inside of this brass fitting is another 45 degree angle. So when the flare fits in there, fits nice and snug. And the copper is the same angle as the brass which is the same angle as the end of my fitting. And when I put it all together, I have a nice tight fitting. Again, two wrenches on here, nice and tight, and you're gonna have a leak-free fitting. Here's a couple of things that, here's a couple of things that have uh, transpired in the last couple of years. Um, these are from uh, Rector Seal, and you can see they're little nylon gaskets. So you would get the right size nylon gasket. It would fit right on the end of your flare that you just made. And when you put the gasket on top of your copper and you connect that with the brass, it just ensures you have a nice, tight, leak-free fitting. Tighten those down and it's just like a little gasket between the copper and the brass. It's a pretty cool thing. Okay, uh, so look for that. There was also a, a product made by uh, Nylog, and it's uh, kind of just a, a like an oil, um, a nylon-based oil that you would put on the fittings, wherever they made up together, put them together again, and that's another way to uh, ensure that uh, you've got a nice leak-free tight fitting, okay? So that's flaring, really important. Uh, this is one of those things that uh, practice makes perfect, and... You may need to do it two or three times. Um, the first time you do one till you get it right. Uh, you put it all back together. If it still leaks, and uh, it's just a matter of cutting, cutting that flare back off, trying it again. Some of the uh, better flaring tools, you can see that little notch in there. 
is made just so you can get this opened up. You can put your pipe right in there. You can cut right up at the end. Just cut that flare right off of there and try it again. Okay, so that's flaring. Super important. Got to know how that's work. That works, and um, practice makes perfect. And more and more of these uh, units, and especially uh, mini splits, are going to this. Uh, so real important that you know how to do a good flare. Uh, there's also new tools out that, again, connect to your battery drills and will do the flaring for you, do swedging for you. Uh, pretty cool stuff, but know how to do it uh, physically on your own. Uh, sometimes that, that makes a better, um, a better fitting all the time. Okay? All right.